It's Chris from Out West with Chris, and today I'm out testing out a new kayak. I am sitting in the Vibe Sea Ghost 110. It's an 11 foot kayak that uh, is actually pretty affordable. It comes stock with a rudder, pretty decent seat. The package that you can get, I think it's about $830. I'll have some exact prices um, a little bit later. It comes with a paddle, so basically, um, you get a pretty decent setup for about $830. And so far, it looks like it's a decent kayak. I'm excited to get out and paddle in it. I'm going to try to do a little bit of fishing, but more than anything else today, I just want to get a feel for this kayak, get to know some of its features, and go over some of those here in a little bit with y'all. So, uh, once again, I'm in the Vibe Sea Ghost 110, an 11-foot kayak. It weighs about 62 pounds. It was pretty easy to move around and get in the water today off of this uh, levee bank. And I'm out fishing in the Delta. The water is muddy and the fish are not biting, it seems like. So as I mentioned, it has a rudder. The rudder is the control for it up and down is right here. And then you have foot control um, for the rudder. So let's pop that rudder down. The rudder is pretty responsive. It's a little tippy. So it'll take a little get getting used to. My last two kayaks have been pretty stable. Comes with a built-in cup holder for my Diet Dr. Pepper. Look at that. And lots of features. You got a center console, so it's gonna cut down on your deck space a little bit, but going to be some pretty handy storage right here um, and it has these mount ports um, they're a little bit loose when you stick them in windy as it is it's not moving a lot in the wind which is nice I've paddled in some kayaks before where slightest breeze and you're you're like a sailboat you're just going for a ride this is a pretty nimble kayak Let's get it! 
So I had a blast paddling the Vibe Sea Ghost 110. It's an 11 foot kayak, 33 inches wide with a 425 pound capacity. It's a uh, rotor molded single piece polyethylene uh, hole. And I thought it was pretty good. So let's take a look at some of the features of this kayak. Up front you have a plastic handle. It's not metal, um, plastic, but it felt pretty firm. Good grip on the front end. You also get a paddle holder, paddle keeper. So slide your paddle underneath there and it's available for just, you know, easy storage. You get a nice big front hatch and it comes with a the little cloth basket type deal to keep things organized and from sliding around in your hole. But you also have some pretty cool hole access. So if you want to go ahead and do some modifications, you have access to put backing plates on or run wiring. And you can also use that area for storage. But, um, you know, stuff, if it's small, can, can slide around in there. But big stuff, you could totally store in there. So it did get a little bit wet, and I think most of that was from the rain the day before when I transported. I don't think it got wet while on the water. I don't know what happened exactly there, something I'm going to watch going forward. It was just a little bit of moisture, not a lot. But I like the front hatch, the design. I like the bag. There's plenty of room. If you know you wanted to do some kayak camping, you could fit a small tent, um, sleeping bag, extra clothes, that type of stuff in there underneath the bag. And you could also put small stuff in there if you tie it off. You could always screw some eyelets um, inside underneath, just underneath the rim. I've done that on a couple of the kayaks. And then that way you could tie a lanyard to it so nothing's going to slide way back in there and get stuck. So, just an option. Next up, um, you got a couple adjustable pedals, and they can adjust even with the controls for the rudder installed. Um, they were really easy to adjust. Just grab there, slide, let go. Um, pretty good range of adjustment, too. The rudder operates with a tow control and I found it to be pretty responsive. It worked really well. I was pretty happy with the rudder and the tow control um, aspect of that. And that all comes pre-installed too. So up front right here you have um, some pad eyes and you have a transducer scupper. So if you don't want to run your transducer off the side if you wire up some electronics you can use that transducer scupper. And those pad eyes actually I've heard that they're kind of set up to create a hinge for the lid on that storage area. So you could use them for a variety of different things though. You have a nice big center console and storage area. It has a big old cup holder right there. And as you can see, it's strapped down. But you also have these ports throughout. And I'm going to play with those ports a little bit more to kind of get a better idea of how to utilize them most effectively. Um, I was using this little GoPro mount right here, but um, you can see they don't secure super well. So something to, to think about. Um, I don't know if I was using the right type of connection there, but you get uh, a couple of rulers there for your fish and it all comes pre-drilled. Those little holes are pilot holes. So... Nice big area on the inside. Um, it also does come with scupper plugs, by the way. But nice big area on the inside for storage or also if you wanted to put a battery for, you know, a fish finder or something like that. I usually, you know, put my dry box in there. But nice big area for storage, um, easy storage. I have, I'll keep my plastics in there, um, my fish and license keys, wallet, and my uh, waterproof deal right there. And yeah, that's what I'd use it for, pretty much. Um, it straps down with those straps to make it nice and secure. You get a nice big section of gear track on both sides in the front. And you also get a nice section on each side in the back as well. You also have that pad eye um, for paddle leashes and just gear leashes, that type of stuff. And you have a paddle park on each side and bungees over, quite like that. So it works pretty good. Um, you get a nice handle on each side as well. And you know I use that to, to carry it down to the water on the levee. Just grabbed it by the side and 62 pounds, it was nice and easy to do. Right by the seat, you have a storage area for your Plano boxes. 
for the small version. And, you know, it would work okay. I usually keep mine in my, my milk crate, but the seat was really comfortable. It's an adjustable seat, so you can use the straps right there to adjust it back or forward, depending on how much back support you want. Um, and then when you're in transit, you can just lay it all the way back. But the seat was really comfortable. I was out for about an hour and a half, two hours, and didn't really have any issues with the seat. The seat is adjustable, so it can go up to a, a higher setting. Um, it gives you about two more inches up. So if that's something you're interested in, you could definitely do that. And it's easy to, to adjust, just pulls right up into the, the setting. It's held in place with those little bungees um, right there. So it's super easy to get in and out, nothing nothing hard or fancy or tricky about it just clip that right over that little lip right there and um, when you're done just unclip it and super easy to get in and out and it felt like it never really felt like it was moving on me or anything um, the seat felt really stable so I didn't feel like it was sliding around or anything like that so as you can see the seat comes right out there's scupper plugs underneath the seat and, you know, the nice thing about a raised seat is your butt doesn't get wet. So, you know, really nice. So you do have a rudder, and that's how you release the rudder. You um, actually pull on it to, to put the rudder down, which was kind of counterintuitive for me. But uh, that's what you do. And then when you're you know, ready to pull it back up, you just let it out of its kind of parked position and it just slams right back up really quick. So um, just like that. And the rudder was pretty nice. Um, for transit, there is a little bungee. You slip right over the rudder um, just to keep it in, in its place, which is a nice feature. I like that. I like how the rudder stores too, um, kind of perpendicular with the hole. You also get um, two flush mount rod holders and they come with covers, so that's interesting. You get gear track in the back and um, it comes with these you know, adjustable bungees, which I, that's what I used to secure my crate was the bungees. But if you want to put like a VisiCarbon Pro or some other light or something, you can do that there. Um, you can run a camera back there. gear track however you want to do it so lots of different options with the gear track I, that's one thing I like about this is it has gear track and not like a propri proprietary track system so um, you get a whole axis in the back and it is also bagged so it's a bit smaller I think it's about four inches maybe five but uh, it does give you access into the hole and you could probably stick a small like two-piece spinning rod in there if you bent the handle over on the on the reel, um, you can fit some other gear in there as well. So overall, I thought this was a pretty dang good kayak, especially for 830 bucks. I mean, you get a rudder and a paddle and all of the built-in features for $830. That's a pretty good deal. Um, I think that this would be a great kayak if you do a lot of uh, kind of medium size, medium to small size river fishing. Um, I think it'll handle that really well, and it's just nice and maneuverable. You can get into some of those tight spaces really easy, and it was a breeze to paddle. It was fun to paddle. It's really fast, um, and I mean, it's quite a bit faster than the other kayak that I'm in right now, um, and it tracks pretty well, especially when you have the rudder down. Um, you know, the tracking wasn't a major issue. When you don't have the rudder down, you can kind of feel it go back and forth a little bit, not too bad. So if you're in the market for a kayak, if you're a first time kayaker, definitely you're gonna wanna look into this one. I think the price point is perfect for a brand new kayak. So, you know, definitely take a look at it. Big shout out to Headwaters Kayak in Lodi, California for you know letting me demo this for a little bit. They are a dealer um, for Vibe Kayaks. So, you know, if you have questions, you can check them out. I will link their website and I'll put their phone number in the description and you know you can give them a call. I will be doing a few more videos on the Vibe Seaghost 110 
um, as time goes on the next month or two probably and you know I'll, I'll build a better opinion but right off the bat after my first float I think that this is definitely a kayak that deserves some consideration if you're looking into getting a new one um, especially for those of you that like to fish smaller bodies of water um, this will do good on open water but I think it it really has a place for some of those smaller rivers. Um, like I said before, it's fast, nimble, agile, $830 for a complete package. So you might want to check it out. All right, if you like this video, please click that thumbs up button and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the comment area down below. And as always, thanks for getting out west with Chris. Mm -hmm.